In today's video, we do an in-depth dive into the equipment of Halo Infinite and how the game itself, quoted from a developer, is content complete. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like this kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. You want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. Make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So this will be my final video doing a deep dive into the January development update that we got from Halo Infinite. I've done previous videos doing like an overall highlight of the whole thing, uh, an in-depth dive into the weapons, an in-depth dive into the vehicles, the combat doctrine as well. And in this video, we're gonna be doing the equipment. Equipment is something we have not seen in Halo since Halo 3, which I think overall, did rather well, but I think what the issue was with the equipment is that they kind of removed it and they tried making that inherent abilities to the player for a lot of different kind of ways, which really messed up the combat formula when it comes to Halo. And it looks like with Halo Infinite, according to these developers, looking to bring it back more to maybe like a Halo 3 style combat system. So let's jump right into it. Now you're probably wondering why bring back equipment. Well, Quinn Del Hoyo, the lead of the Sandbox team says, Equipment is meant to be a force multiplier by design. The player can flip a combat encounter on its head. That's what makes equipment so exciting, that it can find ways to completely make something that's rather predictable, like a gunfight, and completely make it original and a unique situation, keeping the gameplay fresh and fun, giving the player more abilities than they usually have. Like in Halo 3, we had the grav lift, which kind of essentially enhances your jump ability, make it so you can reach up to higher low elevations. You have the power drain, which deals out more damage to kind of give out, take out the player's shield so that you can take out the player faster. The radar jammer is there to kind of act as a way to kind of maybe kind of blend in with the crowd if you're playing with your team, but you're out in a solo situation, throw down a radar jammer so you can push up into a more stealthy kind of way to kind of catch a player off guard if you're like, if you're playing with the team or whatnot, but you're out there by yourself. Elan Gleber, if I make sure I pronounce that correctly, who's a sandbox designer for 343 for the last couple of years, did say this about their most recent Halo tiles and equipment moving forward. Compared to recent Halo tiles with more innate abilities, talking about Halo 4 and 5, equipment in Infinite creates fewer overall instances of change within the core combat loop. However, we can make those instances much more impactful and fun. We have more room to push the boundaries of our sandbox, allowing new ways for players to express their skill and game knowledge across various play styles. This is why equipment was a clear choice and it gives us a lot of space to grow and change the meta as the game progresses over the years. I've even seen YouTube videos talking about this, why you need to probably put bigger emphasis on the sandbox when it comes to uh, advancing Halo's playstyle because the core gameplay loop of Halo is really good. But then with Halo 4 and 5, they tried messing around with that a lot and it kind of turned off, well, the majority of players. Also, Halo Reach did this as well, giving players innate abilities like sprint or like armor lock, boosting abilities, barn charge, ground pound, and things like that that really just kind of adds a little bit too much to the gameplay that kind of loses that instance of what's the core aspect of the shooter it's to shoot things. I had a friend in Halo 5, his tool of destruction was melee because he would just sparring charge everything. And I'm like, you're playing a shooter, but you're meleeing everything. Obviously that's his play style and that's how he likes to play, but I'm just giving you an example of like, what are you really playing here? And Elon's exactly right about this, saying that equipment doesn't mess up with the core combat loop at all. All of Halo 3's equipment is passive. It doesn't actually deal out any damage or anything. It just affects the gameplay in a certain way where it still needs the player to initiate that golden triangle of guns, grenade, and melee to actually execute the kill. Halo 5 especially messed with this with creating more of a pentagon shape allowing ground pound and spartan charge. Another thing they mentioned about equipment in Halo Infinite is that they want it to be easy to understand. You know, there's a lot of aspects within Halo 5 where honestly, like there's a lot of things that a lot of people didn't actually pick up on when it comes to how weapons and equipment are used in that game. And it sounds like they're kind of returning back to the Halo 3 style of things with simplicity, but high skill ceiling. Mentioned here specifically saying, another key aspect was equipment with a low skill floor and a high skill ceiling. In other words, equipment that was easy to understand and benefit from for beginning players. 
but with elements of mastery that allow high skilled players to do some amazing stuff. Equally important is how the equipment feels on the opponent's end. Not only that it's balanced, but that there's engaging counterplay or clear telegraphing that gives players on both sides an opportunity to display skill mastery. This is a great philosophy I would love to see Halo return to is the simplicity of how Halo is. I've always kind of equated it to chess where it takes you know five minutes to learn, but then a lifetime to master. And that's what makes Halo 3 and previous more classic Halos so amazing. I can kind of bring the similar analogy to, well, the Battlefield series. If you guys have ever played Battlefield 3 or 4, say something like a tank, right? It's super overpowered, right? You can fully slay out an entire lobby if you play it right. But there is that counter of the engineer and people can spawn with rocket launchers and different anti-vehicle weapons to really take them out pretty easily, to be honest. So an inexperienced tank driver can be taken out, you know, make it like three or four kills, but then taken out. A well-experienced, well-knowledge player can absolutely dominate a lo lobby with like a 50 kill streak. And that's the similar kind of idea that they're looking to bring in with equipment for Halo Infinite. They don't want equipment to be just like an instant easy button to make something, you know, way better in your favor. They want to make it so then that you have to put some thought into when to utilize this equipment at the right time. They also mentioned a clear telegraphing maneuver as well. So you'll probably get a clear, like in Halo 3, you had a clear like arm toss maneuver when it comes to showcasing that someone's gonna throw some equipment on you. So you have the ability to counteract their actions. So it sounds like they're, they're gonna have a similar feel with equipment from Halo 3 and Infinite that it's gonna be much more passive kind of advances to your ability to get kills in the game, but not necessarily anything that's like gonna be an instant win kind of option for you to utilize. It's still up to you to utilize that golden triangle of guns, grenades, and melee. One part about equipment I'm certainly worried about is how is it gonna work across game mode? So we have campaign obviously, and we're obviously gonna have multiplayer. And as you can probably assume, some things that work out really well and are fun to utilize in campaign might be extremely annoying and frustrating to play against while in multiplayer. There's a reason why you don't really see radar jammer or the flare equipment utilized a whole lot in Halo 3's multiplayer because it's honestly kind of annoying to deal with. And 343 recognizes that by saying here, we are tailoring each equipment and all the sandbox features for that matter to the experience they are being used. So expect to see some minor differences between multiplayer and campaign when it comes to acquiring equipment and the frequency in which it can be used, etc. To be honest, I actually got really concerned when I heard that equipment's coming into the multiplayer because that drop shield that we saw in the campaign does seem kind of annoying, to be honest, because if I had to come across that in multiplayer, I would not like that because it's a one-way thing. You can actually shoot through that if you're the person who deployed that, as we saw in the gameplay demo. Would that be something that could work within multiplayer? Um, maybe, but I really don't like the idea of that. The bubble shield, though, it does kind of annoy me sometimes to play can get away though it does kind of balance out that you can't shoot through the shielding at all but it, with Halo Infinite it looks like you can maybe within the multiplayer that'd be a, a, just a straight wall that you can't shoot through in multiplayer maybe those are the kind of changes that we could see again we'll just have to know more as soon as we get closer to the release of Halo Infinite and know more details maybe the grapple shot won't be like an infinite use cooldown thing which it looks like in the campaign maybe in multiplayer you'll have maybe like three or four or five uses out of it and then it maybe it breaks away or something like that. but at least it's good to know that 343 is going to be taking that into consideration that there might be some differences that need to be done and another really important thing which I mentioned at the top of this video is that Halo Infinite is content complete. This falls in line with a leak that we saw from Clobril back in October of 2020 saying the game is more or less content complete. They can fully focus on the technical aspect now. I absolutely do expect Halo Infinite to be released in 2021. Um, the sandbox lead himself, Quinn Del Hoyo, said all our launch content is in-game and being played daily, but it takes strong effort to get something from 90% to a full 100% ship quality. When I hear this, it's very reassuring to me that they're not necessarily trying to create new things or anything like that. It's just fine tuning everything to make sure that when this game does launch, it's exactly how they envisioned it to be or how each item works within the sandbox and creates its own kind of little niche. 
Like in my previous weapons development update video we talked about, that they said that they completely changed the Ravager to be more of an area of denial kind of weapon rather than just like another launcher. That's what that 90% to 100% does to much of the sandbox within Halo Infinite. And lastly, they actually go into a little bit of a new equipment that they haven't showcased yet, but it sounds rather exciting and plays around with some physics within Halo Infinite. The grapple shot is definitely a favorite of mine, but I'm equally excited about an equipment item we haven't shown yet. It's highly physics based, has tons of interactions across our sandbox, and will leave you laughing and yelling, did you see that? Proper timing is everything with this equipment, and if you position correctly, you could very well send your enemies flying. Now I've seen people speculate this might be just like grav lift returning or something like that, but and I never really said, did you see that when utilizing the grav lift? Maybe a couple times, but nothing too crazy, right? Uh, this sounds like something that'd be just like, absolutely send a grunt to the freaking moon with a kind of reaction. At least that's what I would have to do to get that kind of reaction of using a, utilizing equipment in Halo Infinite. Obviously, there's multiple ways to initiate some physics within Halo Infinite and just Halo Sandbox in general. So we honestly can't really speculate too much on this because it could be a million different things. But it's just cool to know that they have some more exaggerated parts like this, like they mentioned earlier in this development update, saying that these pieces of equipment allow you to kind of exaggerate on the sandbox a little bit without actually breaking the game. So if you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let us me know you want to see some more content like this. If you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen over here. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.